The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Turn this thing around Gotta turn it around Gotta turn it around Gotta turn it around I'm calling on the name That changes everything Yes Gotta turn it around Gotta turn it around Gotta turn it around all of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. I pray God come, turn this thing around. God turn it around. Turn it around, God, turn it around. Call it on the name, it changes everything. Yeah. God, turn it around, God, turn it around, God, turn it around.
And we are going, Jim. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good, Good morning. morning. I want to welcome all of you to West Main Church of the Nazarene, Turnaround Ministries. Uh, it's a beautiful day out there. God is uh, truly working. The one thing I want to touch on before we get started is how the enemy, Lucifer, Satan, the devil, whatever you want to call him, those are him and all three packages there. He is the prince of this world. Truly he is. And he will do what he can to dig into your mind to change your attitude for the day. I know this morning as we got here at church, he was working on that, but he did not succeed. For God is more greater and more powerful than he could ever be. So we need to keep the spirit of God, his word in our heart, our minds, and our souls. And when he starts working on us and starts beating us up, we need to call upon the Lord to help us get away, him to get away from us. Because he truly will do his best to twist your day so that it's not a joyous day. And he will not be able to rob the joy of God from our hearts. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we have a guest here this morning. Welcome. It's a little late, but I'm That's here. That's okay. She's here. All right. Well, you know, the Lord takes us whether we're early in serving Him or late in our lives when we're serving Him. Amen? Amen. He's grateful for all of that. The Word of God today and our Jesus is calling here September the 17th. You will not find my peace by engaging in excessive planning or attempting to control what, you, what will happen to you in the future. That is a commonly practiced form of unbelief. When your mind spins with multiple plans, peace may sometimes seem to be within your grasp, yet it always eludes you. Just when you think you have prepared for all possibilities of all things for the day or for the future, something unexpected pops up and throws things into complete confusion. That's what man does to himself. Because God is not the author of confusion. We are. I did not design the human mind to figure out the future. That is beyond your capacity or capability. I crafted your mind to continually communicate with me. Bring me all your needs, your hopes, your fears, your worries, commit everything into my care. Turn from the path of planning to me in the path of peace. Amen? Amen. Before we go any further, I'd like to open up for anybody that has a testimony of what God is doing, what He's blessing you with, what's going on in your life. you want to share something with us? Wes? Um, Friday, we woke, I woke with my friend to hand out Tenny to the kids, and we had a couple parents came out saying testimonies about how really helpful that was, Good. and how tiny it was out Good. of it. We need to reach out to our children, because they're our future for tomorrow. Anyone else? Brother Dale? I just want to thank you, Lord, once again, just to be in this house. Mr. Amen. Priest, him, and song, and spirit, and testimony. He does such wondrous things. Right in front of our eyes, and we don't see it. Amen. Until we just turn around and say, Lord, help me see. And he reveals what he's showing you. Amen. And he opens your eyes, and you can see it. And at the same time he opens your eyes, he opens your heart. 
Thank you. Accept what he's given you. He's blessed me so many times this week, whether in prayer, whether in work, whether in walking down the street. I know he's with me and he blessed me each step I take. It's not always an overwhelming, instant, joyous event of a blessing, but it is a blessing. And you have to recognize each blessing. Just a little nudge to one of your fellow co workers. Say, hey, let's see you today. Just, yeah. just a little song you hear from a bird singing in the trees. So it's a blessing. You just stop and listen and hear the voice of God. Amen. It's just such a blessing to hear what he has to say when you have open ears and open heart. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Is there anyone else that wants to testify what God's doing for them in their life? Anyone? Amen. We'll pray for you, of course. Okay. You know, God's a great physician, so there's no worries. Anyone else have something they'd like to say about what God's done for them, what He's doing for them? Yes. I haven't had any felt at all. Well, praise the Lord. Years. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. Give God a praise to the Lord. Amen. 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 Yes. I know you want to say something. I see you. Go ahead. Um. I just thank you for everything you've done for me this past year. Uh, yeah. It's been a big change in my life, career, my and marriage, all those things, and taking care of them. Yeah. And my kids. Yeah. I just like to thank you, Lord, because you're a miracle in my life. Amen. <laughs> All of our children are miracles. We're all miracles. Every day we get up, for the very breath of life comes from God that's in us. And He holds that every day. We have to thank Him every day that we get up and have another day to share with the world that His love is true. Amen? Amen. Amen. I just want to thank God for what he's done for me in my life. A few weeks ago, we had a, uh, a family get-together up at the campground. And we're a blended family. And as adults, we have to be that example. Uh, when there's a blended family, when there's many grandmas and grandpas together, that we be mature enough to end in a godly way come together to show our children that you know we need to get past a lot of things animosity and hate that's brought sometimes through division in families where God brings us back together and that past weekend that we were up there I seen how God worked his hands to destroy that animosity, take away the hate, so that we could all be together and show the love of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Amen. Today we're going to be preaching on faith and what is faith, what does faith look like, and what how do we get to that point in our lives where we have enough faith to truly believe that God is who He says He is. There are some key factors in our faith that we need to understand. We have to have a relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Those are three major keys in our Christian walk. And if there's one of those keys that's missing, we cannot really enjoy the pleasures of our Christian life. That the Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ, God the Father, who gave up His Son to give us salvation and life eternal. The Holy Spirit, who the Father sent to us to comfort us, to guide us, to instill in us the Christ-like character that we need to have. We'll be in, starting in Hebrews chapter 11. 
you want to turn there. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna sing a song, a couple songs first, then we'll get started on our message. What was that again? Hebrews chapter eleven. And we'll also be in Romans. Just to let you know, you don't have to turn here complete all the way. Uh, Romans 10, starting at 17. And also in the book of James, it speaks of faith and works and what that means. Right now I'm going to sing a couple songs and uh, then we're going to look at a video before we start the message. The video speaks about our freedoms as Christians and the faith that we have to have and the ability to have the faith to know we can stand against the, the enemy when they come against us to try to crunch our faith in Christ and our beliefs. And the things that we have to stand up for, and we stand up for them in a godly way. Not in an angered way, not in an irrational way, but in a godly way. Amen? This is not our wish, no music? Yes, this is not our music. We did not write it. We're thankful for those who have and thankful for them giving us the ability and the privilege to sing the songs to bring praise and glory to God. Amen. Amen. Like 
Yeah, just hit the pause button, let it play, and, and bump it up a little bit. Go ahead and hit the pause and get the music going. Hit the pause button. I bet he did. Okay. Get turned up just a little bit. Oh, 
freedom and then lost it. Have never known it again. Let's face it. Your God, your book, are in the way. You feel that you're making a last ditch stand for your faith. And you've chosen this as a hill that you're willing to die on. Our whole faith started because one man chose a hill he was willing to die on. I would like to call this hearing of the House Subcommittee to order. Right now, there's an effort on the way to amend the universal educational guidelines. Once we decide what a child needs to know, it becomes imperative that every child know it. Do you remember the visit we got from the social services the other day? I'm here to review your homeschooling environment. Religion has been removed from our schools. They're teaching kids that they don't need God. If your children do not show up at school a week from Monday, you will be charged with contempt of court, meaning you will be incarcerated. Shannon said last night she doesn't want her parents going to jail. This is bigger than just homeschooling. I think we should fight this. We need to. I just want to make sure you understand what you're fighting here. Our district teaches a revisionist version of history. God is for us. Who can be against us? Not around right here. Just why who knows. The country is just now beginning to realize that unity means winning under our terms. For 2,000 years, men have been trying to get rid of Christianity. What makes you think that you can accomplish what they couldn't? They didn't have an 83% approval rating. That's part of your plan, isn't it? Keep us all divided so we don't realize that you're really chipping away at our freedoms and liberties. America is a country so blessed to whom much is given, much will be required. You see those statues and those monuments out there? They say, you work for us. You are out of order, Mr. Bowie. Government of the people, by the people, for the people. for that. We have to understand as our faith in Christ is a freedom. We may not see it that way. But sometimes there are areas of the world where that freedom can bring you death. Here in the United States we have the freedom to share our faith, to show our faith in Christ. Like I said, there are some areas of the world that if you're caught with the scripture of God's word, of the gospel, of Jesus Christ, you can be put to death for it. But those people have enough faith to believe that death of a physical body doesn't matter, but life eternal with Jesus Christ is more important. So they take that risk. The question I have to ask us all the day when we take that risk to show our faith if the country came against us and it cost us our lives. Well, think about that for a minute. Just think about it to yourself and see if you can answer that question to yourself. In other countries, they don't have a building in Africa, for instance. They don't get up on Sunday morning and say, ah, man, I gotta go to church today. Dang, I gotta be there, it's my responsibility. Or you know, if I'm not there, people will start talking. But I gotta go. They feel it's more of a obligation than a passion. God only knows what you go through, like the song is saying here, it was playing there. That's fine. But what we have to ask ourselves, like I was getting back on the other subject, we drive our cars to church. Uh, prayerfully, we come with passion to hear the Word of God, not a dredge, or an obligation, or a job. Well, I got to get up here and preach. Yeah, it's my job. I got to be there. You know. I hope that my heart is full of passion to share the gospel with others. And that it's not an obligation 
or a job, but truly a passion that God has put in my heart to share the gospel. And I think each and every one of us out here, whether we're in this church here, another church, or listening on Facebook or whatever media that you're listening on, Like I said, we drive in a comfortable vehicle to come to church. We stay warm when it's cold. We stay cool when it's hot. We come into an air-conditioned or heated building, and it's comfortable. And like I said, I hope we come here with a passion for Christ and others. Some countries, let's take Africa, for instance. A lot of those people have no vehicles. They live in a shed or a shanty. No air conditioning, no heating. And then they come to know Jesus. Some will say, well, maybe that's all they got. Well, if that's all they've got, they got everything, right? Amen? Amen. Amen. They have no vehicles. And usually the church that they go to is under a tree. A lot of them will walk for many miles, maybe a couple miles, maybe four miles. They start early in the morning. This is not just a make-believe story. This is a fact. Their hearts are so filled with the love for Christ because of the love that he has for them and they truly believe it in faith that they will get up, some of them before the sun comes up, and they will journey with their families to where the gospel of Jesus Christ is going to be preached. And they're excited for it. They don't say, oh, I've got to go say, I get to go tomorrow to church to hear the gospel of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with excitement in their eyes and their faces and in their hearts. I have to ask each and every one of us, even myself, do I have that? Would I get up before the sun come up and journey by foot? Or maybe by bicycle for a mile or two or maybe, maybe a couple of hours just to hear the gospel of Jesus. That's a question only you can answer. A question only I can answer for myself. But let's be thankful for what we have here in the United States. In this country, we have beautiful buildings to worship God in. We have vehicles to transport us back and forth. If that was all taken away, would we still have enough faith in Christ to find out where he was being preached and taught and go there with a joyful heart? Would we do that? That's a question, like I said, only you can answer that. It could be in a comfortable air-conditioned building, have a hot cup of coffee and donuts, or, you know, driving a car. Think about it. I'll continue on to, uh, we're going to go into the book of Romans. Start verse 17. I may jump around a little bit. I'm in the right spot here. <laughs> Anybody have that? Okay. Verse 17, chapter 10, Romans. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So do you hear the word of God? Do you study the word of God to obtain your faith? To build that relationship with Christ? But remember, 
There's three keys for that relationship. That's God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I said earlier on that the Holy Spirit is the one who dwells within us as our Savior, Jesus Christ, sits at the right hand of the Father as our intercessor. We need all of those to obtain our faith. If we lack one of them, we struggle in our faith because we're not, if we're not listening to the Holy Spirit, but we know, we say we know Jesus, it's hard to be ministered to without the Holy Spirit in our hearts. So just realize that. We're going to go to the book of James. It talks about works. We can do a lot of good things, a lot of good works. But without faith, our works are dead. Because faith brings good works. So if we have faith in Christ, we're going to do things that are good for people, good for the kingdom, so that it will show our faith. We're not going to do it for ourselves, for self glorification or a pat on the back. I think the biggest blessing we get is when we do things that nobody knows about except God. It's not amplified throughout the church or throughout the community. It's amplified in the kingdom of heaven. No one needs to know that we've done a good thing. We don't need the pat on the back. We don't need to thank you. Because if God knows what we've done, and we've done it to bring glory to him and to reach out to others, the blessing that he will put upon us will be on our imagination. Because when we do things, we do works, we do good things for others, but yet we want recognition for it. That type of works is not done through faith. It's done through self-edification. I want to be lifted up. I want people to see what I'm doing. That is not what God wants us to do. Truly, there are things that we will be recognized for, but we receive that compliment or that thanks, and we receive it humbly, because we know that without our faith, we wouldn't be doing that. Without Jesus Christ in our heart, reaching out to others, we wouldn't be doing that, because we are a selfish people. But with the love of Christ in us, it takes away that self-centeredness, and that selfishness. Because we have the faith that God is going to, God knows what we're doing. So when we get out there and we want to be recognized, we get our glorification here. We get our rewards here. But we won't get that reward in heaven. Because we're not doing it for God, we're doing it for ourselves. I'm going to tell you a little story. Many years ago, we were living in Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, we started going to the Beaches Church in the Nazarene, which is no longer there, it's been torn down. My wife and I got saved there. And uh, it was Easter. I remember right, let me check with my wife. Well, it was Easter, we were singing that song. I think it was for Easter. And uh, I just started going to church there, and you know, I could sing. And they asked me to sing a song. And uh, I was kind of, I don't know if I, I, I guess I was kind of arrogant. And uh, I said, well, do you know how great thou art? I said, yeah, I know that song backwards and forwards. 
And uh, so I got up to sing the song, and I did know that song inside out. And here I am, I'm going to sh show what Jim can do. Well, Jim forgot almost all the words. God put his finger on me and said, Now, who are you singing this for? Are you glorifying yourself? Or are you glorifying me? He truly got my attention. Because that was a time when I never forgot any words to a song. <laughs> but God put his finger on me and said, No, no you're, you're here for the wrong reason. You should be here glorifying me and the kingdom and my son. So he really humbled me that day. I guess my point is, is if we're going to do something for the kingdom, do it in faith so that your works is blessed. And it's not glorifying you or anybody else but God. God will give you the blessing. Man will not. And if you fail in what you're trying to accomplish, your biggest critic is not going to be God. It's going to be the people that you've tried to perform that thing in front of. And when you fail at it, they will not let you forget it. But God will forgive you. But man won't. Just remember that. Because we are critical people. Sorry if I was rambling, but uh, I just think I'm trying to make a point of what we're doing here. What our faith is all about. In the book of James, he talks about our faith and our works, and he also talks about the Holy Spirit that's dwelling within us. I want to start at uh, 14 and hit a couple of other verses along the way. For what does it profit a man, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? Well, the word tells us further on that faith brings good works. Faith brings the work. Because with our faith in Christ, in my belief, it instills in us to want to do good works for the kingdom, to reach out to others, to bring the gospel. If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and the one who says to them, depart in peace, be warm and filled, but you do not give them the things which they are in need of. For the body needs clothing and food. What does it profit you? So basically, you kind of turn your back on them. You know they need this and they need that, but yet you're not willing to give it up for them. Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone says to you, will you say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. I don't know what that means to you, but to me, I have enough faith that I can go and do something depending on God to help me fulfill that work, whether it be a financial, a physical, or my time, knowing that God's going to provide that so that I can do His work through faith. His work, not mine. So that infilling of the Holy Spirit will guide you and drive you 
to do that once. In verse 21, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Was he justified by his works? But he also had to have faith to even come close to doing what he almost did. But God perhaps was testing his faith through his works. Will you do this for me? Asking Abraham to sacrifice his son for him. That took an awful lot of faith to believe that God had the right plan to take the life of your only child. Think about that for a minute. Do we have that kind of faith? What does faith look like? You have to ask yourself. Abraham is a good example. The people who walk many miles to hear the gospel are a good example. That's what faith looks like. Verse 26. James says, For as the body without the spirit is dead. We talked about that briefly. The Holy Spirit has to be welcome in our heart. Welcome in our bodies. Without the Spirit, we're not going nowhere. The Holy Spirit, I said before, I'll say it again. He is the one who the Father sent as a promise when Jesus ascended into heaven and set up the right hand of the Father so he could dwell with each and every one of us and guide us and counsel us and manifest the Christ-like character that lives within us. That is key to our Christian walk. I'll say it again. For the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works is dead. And that just takes us right back up to Abraham. Was he justified by his works? He also had to have faith. Think about that for a minute. He had to have the faith of knowing that God the Father had the right plan. Believing in him. To take his son on a journey that he believed was going to be the last time he'd ever seen his son alive. But he had enough faith in God to know this must be the right thing that God did not ask him to do it. Through God's love and his grace for us, it is something that we sometimes cannot even comprehend. God will reveal the things that he knows we need to know and we need to understand. So there may be many things as we read his word that we don't understand right now or we try to comprehend it but still don't have a clear understanding of it. But eventually when you progress, all of us, as we progress in our walk with Christ in our Christian life, he will reveal the knowledge that you need to know and need to have for that day. I've seen it for myself. I've read scripture many times. Okay, what does this mean? I don't know. None of us know everything. At this time, we're going to take our offering. Give back to the Lord a small amount of what he gives to us. He is always faithful.
And he always, always blesses those who give with a joyous heart. Lord, we pray for this offering today. We pray, Lord, for those who can give. Bless them. Lord, bless those who have the heart and the desire to give but cannot, Lord. Be with them. Be with us and guide us. Multiply this offering, Lord, for the kingdom. Let it be used for the kingdom. And let those who are the stewards of it be good stewards of this offering to you, Lord. You tell us, Lord, you are the God of all creation. You have created the world. You have all power over all things. But yet, in your word, you challenge us to put you to the test. Be obedient to me in your giving, and I will bless you overwhelmingly. We ask this blessing of multiplying this gift that we give to you today, Lord. With your blessing, Lord, from heaven, just be multiply this, Lord, so that we can continue to bring glory to the kingdom, Lord. We just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
You know, the song says, no mortal man would dare to stand before the throne of God. And I know that we know, and I pray everyone else knows, that in the presence of God, we would be so overwhelmed, we would just fall upon our faces. I've said, I've told you this before, I'm working on a song. <laughs> I've been working on it for about a year now, I haven't finished it, but... In that song, it talks about that Jesus, in a whisper, called my name. And I fell on my face and cried, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And he took my hand and raised me up, and I looked upon his face. And I seen in his eyes the grace that set me free. So make no mistake, if we ever stand before the Lord, we will be so humbled that we will fall upon our face. But he will be faithful to raise us up. And you will see the grace on his face that sets you free. Amen? Amen. Amen. I have one closing song for you. It's one of my favorite. And I know we all know it, so if you'll stand with me and sing it, or you can sit right where you're at and sing it with me. There's a university, there's lots to do and see There are cafes and restaurants, and a museum too Let's go to the cinema 
wishes from all of us at Parkview Health for a happy, healthy holiday season. From all of us at Parkview Health, have a healthy, happy holiday.
chime in, jingle bell time. Snow in and blow in a bushel of fun. Now the jingle hop has begun. That's the Jingle Bell.
and number three run.